Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can configure your Vapor app to use a database. Vapor comes with a database engine called Fluent that's built from the ground up using Swift 3. Even though Vapor and Fluent are both quite young, they already support a wide variety of databases, including MySQL, SQLite, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, and even an in-memory data store. In this screencast, we're going to use PostgreSQL, and this is mainly because Heroku, which we'll be using to deploy the app, has really nice built-in support for this. But if you prefer to use a different database provider, don't worry. You can take what you learn here and apply it to any database provider you want. You only have to change about three lines of code. The first thing you need to do is install PostgreSQL on your local machine. I found the best way to do this is with Brew, which you can install by going to brew.sh and following the instructions. Once you've installed Brew, run Brew Update and then Brew Install Postgres. I've already done this, so I see a warning at this point. After it completes, run postgres-d slash user slash local slash var slash postgres to start the database server. Again, I've already done this, so I see a warning. Then run create db who am I to create a database based on your username. You get the picture, I've done this already. Do know the back ticks around who am I. Finally, enter psql to open the command line interface for PostgreSQL. If that runs correctly, it means everything is working okay, so you can quit with slash q. Now that we have our database set up, we just need to configure Vapor to use it. And there are just three steps to do this. One, import the package. Two, configure your droplet. And three, create a configuration file. It's pretty easy, so let's give it a try. Let's create a new Vapor project with Vapor New Hello Persistence, switch over to that directory, and create a new Xcode project with Vapor Xcode. The first step is to include the package for the database provider. You can see a list of all of the database providers by going to the Vapor project in GitHub and searching for a provider. There's several database options here, but we want the PostgreSQL provider. I'll copy the URL, and back in my project, I'll open package.swift and add this URL to the list of dependencies. Note that we want version 1.0. Now that I've modified the package file, I need to regenerate the Xcode project with Vapor Xcode to fetch and configure the dependency. The second step is to configure your droplet to use the database provider. To do this, I'll open main.swift, import the database provider, and add a new parameter to the droplet initializer to pass in the provider. Build real quick just to make sure it compiles okay, and don't worry about the warning. The third and final step is to create a configuration file for your database provider. Each database provider has a particular configuration file name they are looking for with a particular set of properties, and the provider GitHub page usually has an example. I'll copy the example here and add it to my project under config secrets postgresql.json. I'll then update it with the values for my database. Remember that I created a database with my username. Now that we've completed the three steps, that's it. Let's just try it out. I'll create a new route called version that will simply print out the version of the database to make sure the connection works. To access the database, I can use the database property on the droplet, which has a driver property, which we know as a PostgreSQL driver. To issue a raw command, you can just run db.raw. This returns an intermediate node representation that's easy to convert straight into JSON. If I build and run, it works. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand the three steps to create a database. Import the package, configure your droplet, and set up a configuration file. Now that you've created a database, I'm sure you're eager to store something in it. But first, of course, you need something to store. And that's the subject of my next screencast, creating a model object. Thanks for watching and happy configuring. I'm out.